Welcome back to uh, Coffee with April. Um, it's time to launch an other subscription coffee. This time we're talking about the coffee for July. Um, it's gonna be a really fun coffee, very interesting, and we love to just do these kind of videos. So we're gonna walk you through the, the green coffee, the roasting, uh, the brewing, um, and the taste as well. Uh, I'm actually drinking it right here, right now. So uh, the coffee we're gonna send out is from Bolivia which is kind of interesting because it's the first time we had a Bolivian coffee here in April. The biggest reason why we're looking into Bolivian coffee at the moment, uh, and you for example see Ecuadorian coffee as well, is that we're looking for coffees that we can work with during the first two quarters of the year, meaning they should be harvested in the later part of this year. Um, so this coffee is for example harvested in late September from 2018, right? And what we're trying to do is we want to have a more seasonal focus where we can work with coffees that are traditionally farmed in different parts of the year uh, to maximize the quality of our roasting and to make sure that our coffee green coffee is always as fresh as possible. And since we're not necessarily working that much with either Burundi or Rwanda, um, or Brazil for that matter, then we're looking into new kind of alternative countries to be able to up our game and, and make that coffee tasting really good throughout the whole year here at April. So the coffee that we have now is a washed processed geisha varietal. Um, the farm is Finca Golondrina, and it comes from farmer David Maita. Uh, this is the first time we're working with this coffee. This is a pretty small lot of four bags of coffee. We have all of them. Uh, we've been having them for a while now, and we're kind of test roasting, trying to figure out what the profile should be and not be. Um, it's always interesting when you're working with a coffee for the first time, a new farmer, a new concept. Um, even if the, the washing process in this case is relatively similar to what we're used to for Central and South America, this is still a, a bit different, right? So we've been tweaking the roast profile and, and working, trying to figure out where we want to be and where we don't want to be. Part of Bolivia, which is really interesting, is that you can find coffees on a very high altitude, so much higher than on Costa Rica, for example. This coffee is about 1,800 meters, which gives us just a longer maturation process, usually increases a sweeter cup of coffee, more vibrant flavor profile, sometimes a better acidity structure as well, which we can find in this coffee. Overall, and what this turns into when it comes to roasting is, is pretty interesting. So um, we've been profiling now for, for a few weeks before you guys get to try it. And uh, we've been testing a few different approaches and, and what we're working with currently right now and what you're tasting, um, it's a profile that is relatively, again, aggressive for our style, especially being a coffee from this origin. So we're pushing with a total roast time of nine minutes and 34 seconds. Again, 12 kilo batch, we lock that in. That's something we do consistently. Um, we are pushing a time after a crack, which is up at one minute and six seconds, which is actually a tiny bit shorter than what we normally do for these kind of coffees. We're doing this because it actually increased the vibrancy and we got a bit more uh, acidity structure out of the coffee because it's so inherently sweet as it is. We wanted to make sure to really get some vibrancy out of the cup as well. Um, the end temperature in this case is 208.3 which for us is a relatively consistent end temperature on, on, on what we do in terms of filter coffees here. Again, the end temperature often stays very similar. The way we get to that end temperature can differ a lot depending on coffee. Um, for those of you that are a bit geeky, uh, we're gonna break that into, I mean, working with Cropster allows us these days, and this is very much based on Rob Haas. Um, and we're gonna have a podcast coming up with Rob relatively soon as well. Um, we're talking about drying phase, millard phase, and development phase, which is something that crops are starting to track for, for quite some time now, to be fair. And, and again, we want to share as much as we can. So for those of you that are interested in this, uh, on this specific coffees, our drying phase will be 54%. Um, our millard phase would be 34.49%. And then the time after first crack in terms of percentage would be 11.50. Um, so 
still some tiny bit uh, knows about roasting. What we can say as well, which is, is pretty interesting with this coffee in relationship to other coffees we're roasting. So we've been trying to push the crack rate of ice up relatively high, again, to get more vibrancy because we realized in the early roast of this coffee that we weren't getting enough vibrancy working with the similar kind of top crack and rate of ice as we did previously. So what we've done here is that we basically up that, meaning that we have more energy during that phase of the roast than what we normally would have. This has also resulted in a much higher end rate of rise than what we're used to as well. Um, in our case, being above three on a 30 second setting on this machine, not for example on your probat, don't compare them, they're two very different things. Um, because the probes are very different. Now, uh, this also increased the vibrancy, makes the cup super clean and fresh, which is really interesting. Uh, that's something we come to like very much with this coffee. Um, in terms of brewing um, and in terms of taste, and I'm gonna cheat and actually <laughs> try it now. With a lot of the, the coffees from this region and coffees that are, I think to some extent, inherently more sweeter, um, Interestingly enough, when it comes from, for example, Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia, we find coffees to be much, much sweeter in structure, even though they're wasp processed coffees. So they have a similar sweetness structure as to what, for example, some natural coffees have or honey processed coffees, which is amazing because they have a much cleaner flavor structure because they are washed, but you still have a body and a sweetness that is really interesting in these coffees. Um, so what we're doing brewing wise then, what that means for me is a very fast flow rate. Um, very fast flow rate means V60. V60 is, is by far one of the fastest flow rates you could have, again, depending on grind size and depending on pouring approach. Um, this is basically a, a two minute brew, pretty much in and out, uh, working with 12 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water, very simplistic. Two simple pours, 100 gram. Uh, first aggressively for 10 seconds in a circle. You'll let that go down for one minute and 40 seconds. Now, for those of you that actually try this at home, you're gonna see you're gonna really large hole in your, your coffee mass and you're gonna freak out. And I say, don't freak out, just relax. Uh, do the second pour starting with a circle on the edge of the filter. Uh, then the second question will be, well, aren't we bypassing the coffee and diluting it? Uh, I say, rest, try it and then we can talk about it, right? Uh, so you do the first pour on the, out, on the circle, making sure that that coffee goes down, and then you continue to do a circle pour, again, for 10 seconds in total for the remaining of 100 grams up to 200 grams, and then you just let it go down. No stirring, no swirling, no fuss, just keep it simple, and it's gonna work out. Now, what we find in terms of taste structure here is pretty interesting. So it's very, very sweet. Um, the kind of sweetness I found quite often in, in brown sugar or maybe juicier cane sugar as well. Uh, that's what kind of hits you up front together with leash, very kind of white tropical fruits, which is really interesting. Um, and then what comes out in the back is, is this really kind of gentle note of jasmines, which, you know, it's a geisha. We're bound to find a bit of jasmine in the geisha varietal, which, which I think is really interesting. Overall, it's just a great combination of, of the sweetness in this whole cup. It's not the most complex cup we, we ever had, but in terms of sweetness, structure, uh, and balance, tactility, this is amazing. So for those of you that are subscribing for espresso, this is gonna be really, really cool. Um, and I, I, I would advise a similar approach as with the V60, as in this coffee actually can handle a really fast flow rate. So make sure your brewing times on your espresso actually is a bit faster than what you're used to as well. Um, that's about it. As always, uh, subscribe. We, we really like that you guys are, are supporting us in this and it's just a great way to get to know a bit more about us. And, and we select coffees that are uh, really damn good more or less and, and that's the, I think the interesting process right um, so if you want to sign up do it down here do some comments as well we're always happy to share um, and you know always feel free to share she feedback with us as well we're really interested in hearing what you guys think about what we do and what our coffees are, are tasting like as well um, so thank you guys for watching